Hi everyone, today we're going to do a practical activity which is a little different to our normal practical activity. In this practical activity, you're going to design and build a contraption that automatically bursts a balloon when a person walks through a tripwire which triggers the contraption. The tripwire isn't there to trip the person, it's there to be tripped and to trigger the contraption. This is just one example of a setup, but I've pixelated the contraption itself because it's best if you design and build your own, of course. Tripwires are used in a variety of settings. For example, soldiers in a jungle who have to set up a camp at night sometimes surround their camp with a series of tripwires that are attached to hand grenades. A grenade is attached to a tree, not with sticky tape like I'm doing here, but with a thin metal strap, and the tripwire is attached to the grenade's pin. The other side of the tripwire is attached to another tree. Here I've used a thin red rope as the tripwire, just so that you can see it more easily on the screen you're watching. If an enemy soldier walks between the trees and pulls on the tripwire, the tripwire pulls on the pin, which triggers the grenade, and the grenade explodes. This is what an actual hand grenade explosion looks like. This footage shows some soldiers doing a training exercise. They're not using grenades here, but rather a device called a trip flare. Using flares is much safer than using grenades, because grenades can accidentally be triggered by the same soldiers that set them up. Let's look at another example. This is the Saturn V rocket that carried astronauts to the moon in the late 1960s and early 1970s. The small command module near the top was where the astronauts sat. The rocket was built with a series of trip wires running up the side, which were attached to the launch escape system, which was basically a small rocket attached to the command module. In the event of an emergency, like an explosion of the main rocket, the trip wires along the side of the rocket would be cut, and that would trigger the launch escape system to fire and to carry the command module and the astronauts inside away from the explosion. It turns out that they never needed it, but in this test flight, we can see the system in action. The test rocket lifting an uncrewed command module starts breaking up, which severs the wires, and the escape system fires, carrying the command module away from the disintegrating rocket. Once clear, the escape rocket detaches and the command module deploys its parachutes. Launch escape systems are still used, but it's much more common today for them to use electronic sensors. Trip wires are also used in some industries. Conveyor belts in large factories often have trip wires running along them. If an emergency arises anywhere along the conveyor belt, workers can pull on the trip wire, which activates the emergency switch, which stops the conveyor belt. Now we don't have any conveyor belts, rockets, or grenades, real ones anyway, but we do have balloons to burst. You can think of the activity as a trap for your little brother or sister who's always sneaking into your bedroom when you're inside the lounge room. A trip wire is pulled, which results in the balloon bursting, which means you'll get alerted and they'll get a big shock. To build your contraption, you can use retort stands, boss heads, clamps, maybe some rulers, some cups, some plasticine, icy pole sticks, maybe some straws, and definitely pins and string. And of course, a balloon. Your contraption can make use of gravity, that is, it makes something fall, or use a lever of some description, or operate in any other way that you can think of. I've done this activity with probably 50 or more different classes, and I've seen lots and lots of different designs. Now some rules and tips. A little balloon is very difficult to pop. A large balloon is very easy to pop. The string, the trip wire, has to be placed quite low at about shin height, and the balloon has to be placed over on one side, not directly in front of the person walking. Plasticine can help with securing a pin or pins to your contraption, but there are plenty of other ways as well, of course. Don't expect the balloon to just stay in position if it's resting on the floor, because even a little bit of wind can push the balloon out of position. It's best to secure it between, say, two retort stands or some chairs. 
Be prepared for a few failures first. That's completely normal in any kind of engineering process. The person walking has to test the contraption by just walking normally. Once you've had a successful pop, you have to do it a second time to prove that the first one wasn't just luck. Lastly, you won't be given a balloon until your teacher thinks that you've got a workable design that you've kind of tested. So, when your teacher gives you the go-ahead, you can begin.